Welcome to the set of my fireside chat, where weekly I deliver the news to my friends. I already had it set up, so I figured it might be a good place to do my presentation. Also, I'm incredibly lazy. Uh, my capstone project will be the fine arts portfolio. Specifically, I want to do music composition. My goal is 10 songs or pieces, depending on if I feel like they need lyrics or not. I'm trying to leave as much room for creative decisions as I can. Um, the, that number might change depending on, like, if you've listened to the album, uh, Stevie Wonder album, Songs in the Key of Life, fantastic album, but there are some songs that seem like they have the same point on that album, and I don't really want to do, I don't want to have same songs saying multiple things. I want to keep it, uh, not short necessarily, but like, I don't want to be repetitive. I'm repeating myself now, I want to avoid, I want to avoid that. So, ten songs, um, or... 10 songs or pieces, I say songs, but I don't necessarily mean they're gonna have words. Some of them might have words, some of them might not have words. Uh, I don't have a specific genre of focus or a specific style of focus, because in this wonderful, wonderful time of quarantine, the only genre that matters is quarantine pop. And I cannot wait to see more quarantine pop in the future. No, quarantine pop will not be my specific genre because I'm hoping that I get out of quarantine before the time this project is finished. Um, I the song okay, a greater a grand theme for the songs and pieces. I want to focus on the mundane, the ordinary things, the ordinary interactions, activities, emotions. I don't I don't want some big fluorescent love song, or some we are the world or anything. I I. I don't quite feel that connection, or that, that, uh, I don't feel like I'm qualified to write that type of music anyway, even if I wanted to. I, I feel very connected to this sort of everyday interpersonal stuff, which is sort of where I, where I make my, my living, where I live my everyday life. It's nice, it's, it's ordinary. Um, I'm kind of, I'm kind of delving into the why. I don't know if you can tell, but the very format that I'm in doesn't, isn't a great formal presentation, but I put on a suit jacket, and uh, quite frankly, I'm not in the mental minds, mindset where I can do a formal presentation. Um, so my inspirations of this, you guys, I'm sure know Billy Joel's Piano Man. That song is just about the ordinary people doing the ordinary things, unless I've horribly misinterpreted it. Um, Ben Folds 5, it's a band from the 90s, alternative rock, and then the band leader Ben Folds, who went on to have a fantastic solo career, still does have a fantastic solo career, tend to write lots of like little stories about the things that have just happened to them. Uh, there's one song, the song I've been listening to a lot from Ben Folds, it's on the Rock in the Suburbs album, which is an entire album, just this type of music I'm trying to talk, trying to, I want to make, where it's this, this, it's, it's so personal. It's not grand and like, oh yes, I'm, re I'm relating to it because I too live in the world. It's like, oh, this is a, this is a full person. The Ascent of Stan. Um, fantastic song, first of all. Second, it's just talking about this dude who I think was around during the Vietnam War and was very anti-war. The, there's the line, textbook hippie man that repeats. And then uh, there's the line, you wanted revolution, now you're the institution. Like, that's not necessarily a general person. There's more, more specifics in the song. It's a fantastic song. I recognize you listen to it. Again, The Ascent of Stan. Um, and then we have other, who did I write down? They Might Be Giants. Okay, I, I know this is turning into me just rambling about the music I love, but I, I want to take the things I love, sort of squish them all together, and then make music that's that's mine, and I want it to be about the things I want to write about, and I want to write about the everyday, ordinary things. Like, I don't know. Hopefully this makes sense. Again, if you have any questions, email me. Hopefully I can explain it better when I'm forced to think about the words I'm saying instead of just rambling. Um, they Might Be Giants, fantastic band. You know the Istanbul, not Constantinople people? They've been around since the 90s too. They have like 20 some albums. Uh, and their music is just about, again, ordinary people doing ordinary things. And there's some sort of personalness and beauty in that that I really, 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 really like and really want to make my own of. Um, 
the Beatles, uh, I wrote that down because the song A Day in the Life, which is the, I, I did a cover, I did, you know, one of those like quarantine collaboration things, yeah, I did one of those with the boys, uh, sent it to my band director. It's not the whole song, it's the last two minutes or so, but I, I, I now hold that song very personally, plus a uh, big fan of Paul McCartney, shout out to Paul. Uh, yeah, so that's all for inspirations. Uh, I, I hope you can see that I really, really like music. It, it, it's sort of, it's the one thing I can always come back to, and there's, it's never done. And I, I think that's important. I spend a lot of my time, I'm, I'm big in a marching band and indoor drum line, and that's just the same, it's the same music, but every day you come in and every day you try and do it better, and it's never done, and that's fantastic. I, I love I love that idea that it's that it's never perfect because it keeps me working because a lot of the times I can I can find good enough and good enough works but I don't want to just be good enough I want I want it to be perfect and I want to keep reaching for perfect and I know that sounds weird because like if it's never perfect I'm never gonna finish it and that's maybe one of the things that stopped me from finishing things in the past but if it's a grade, I have. If it's a grade with a due date, there has to be a point where I say, "Okay, this is the best I can get it for now," and maybe I come back to work on it. Maybe I just call it done then. But I, 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 I want to work on music, and I really love music, and it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. What's my last point? Um, yeah, preservation of the life. Again, I, I've been like tossed out of my bunk bed with this whole quarantine thing because I'm a very social person who kind of likes having friends. Uh, hopefully, that's obvious. And I get a lot of my energy from interacting with other people. And like even just pretending I'm talking to people, it's giving me a huge jolt of energy. That's why I do these fireside chats every week. So I want, I want to preserve those, those things I took for granted that the like bantering about with the drum line, you know, the little things like that. Personal flaws that aren't big world ending things, but like, oh, someone's always late. Like that's, that's nice. That's a person. Flaws are what makes us human. Uh, I have no sor no sources to back that up. Don't make me cite that. Okay, next point. Um, my so my my core question is I want to get this wording right. How can music be used to convey everyday ordinary interactions, events, and emotions? So I'm talking about like I, again I'm delving way deeper than I think this presentation was intended for. But one of my earlier concepts was like uh, the the concept of home and I like I've been stuck in my house where I have everything I could possibly need but I, I still haven't felt home uh, mom and dad if you're watching this I love you don't take that the wrong way it's it, like I'm, I'm missing my friends I'm missing the things that made me me I'm stuck here with all the food I could eat, ever eat all the water I could ever drink cheers all the stupid things I could ever do, and I'm still missing something. And maybe that's greed, maybe that's, maybe that's me not being thankful enough for the things I took for granted. But I, I want that old life back, and so I wanna preserve that. Um, hopefully I don't start crying during this presentation. Okay, uh, documentation. I'm, I'm uh, it's really weird because I'm not organized, but I really like keeping track of what I've done. Uh, for the fireside chats, I keep pages and pages of notes. Everything I've ever started has lyrics and then scribbled out and then replaced lyrics and like chords, little script. I, I like having it and being able to look back and go, okay, I actually did this. And I, so a journal format works well because I can just not scribble it in, you know, but real quick, write in what I did, the day I did it, how long it took me to do. And then also it being a journal lets me have an a, an output for my thoughts for my documentation of like the actual music itself beyond just the actions of the music so I, excuse me I hope I wrote examples in yeah uh, so like example two hours spent on June 18th 2020 whatever but then also I could keep track of like the thing the modifications I did to the music so like if I added the example I used on there is added funk to the bass line you know but then there's also that the documentation of ideas. Uh, there's a musician named Jacob Collier who I sent a wildcard email to hoping he would respond to me and he didn't. Uh, but he he's a fantastic musician. Huge inspiration. Love the man. 
He's like 27, he's won four Grammys, he's outstanding. Uh, he keeps a, a journal of sorts, and one of the pages he talked about in an interview, uh, I have too much time, is the, the types of silence. So he's got a page in this journal-esque thing he keeps. It's not like, a daily, not like a diary or anything, just when he has something he wants to write about, he writes about it. And the types of silence. And I don't remember what all the types of silence are, were, but that's part of what's up to me to do. Um, yeah. So, like, I want to write down thing, things like that. The little details that maybe I can use to try and emulate a certain thing. Um, I hope this presentation isn't being graded for professionalism. I couldn't find a rubric. That doesn't mean there wasn't a rubric. Okay. Uh, I think I've talked about everything on this page. Again, I'm posting this presentation with the video. The requirement just said do a video, so I'm doing what I can. Uh, research. Okay, so I, I wasn't quite sure what this meant, and that's on me. But, like, obviously I'm going to need to do more research. And I'm, I am no professional musician. I am a very amateur musician. So, like, music theory. Uh, constructing a melody, constructing rhythms, making things jive. All that fun stuff. And then I've been saying song slash pieces because if I do decide to go into words, that's a whole other realm of stuff I gotta research. I gotta research lyricism, what's good, what sucks, why does it suck, make it not suck, help. Um, and I wrote how to make a bop on there because I, I, this is a very personal project, but I also want it to be good. You know, I don't want to make music just for me. That's cool and all, and I really respect the people who can make music just for them. But I, I want people to be able to listen to it and go like, yeah, that's nice. Or, uh, I have a friend, I have a friend Xander from Omiak. He was, well, he's, he wasn't anything. He still is awesome. But he conducts a lot to music. He was the drum major, Alter Marching Band. Uh, so he'll he'll conduct to the music he likes. He'll learn how to conduct it, and that's really cool. And I, this isn't specifically what I mean, but I want to make some. I want to make music that people could do their thing to. Like I want to make something that Xander would go, nice, and then da, 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 or whatever. I don't know how to conduct. I play drum. Okay. So yeah, melody instrumentation is a big thing. Uh, I don't have access to an orchestra. That would be sick if I did, but I don't. So I'm gonna have to make do with the stuff I, I do have, with the friends I have who can play, with the stuff I have that I can, I can play, with the limited studio recording stuff that I have, unless I can find grander stuff. Or if I decide to do all live performances, I'm gonna have to find people who can play, because the presentation thing is an aspect of it. Uh, it said either the option of recordings or live performance. And so I don't know what I'm gonna write yet, but obviously if stuff is better suited for live performance, I'm gonna have to figure out all that, I'm gonna have to figure out instrument, instrumentation for that, all the practicalities of that. I love the little practicality stuff. Uh, yeah, okay, looking forward to that. So research, there's books on music theory, there's books on melody, instrumentation, all that jazz. And I'm sure I could find poetry books, because lyrics, lyrics are more or less just poetry set to words. That's my very basic understanding of lyrics. I don't do much with the lyrics. I just listen to Ben Folds and he says something funny and I go, nice, and we move on. But I, I want to do something like that. And if I need lyrics, I'll do lyrics. You know, all that jazz. Research. Look into it before you do it. I've learned that. Thanks, Miss Harrington. Okay, collaborative expert. Please don't just cut me off immediately for this. I don't have a collaborative expert yet. It's not entirely my fault, although it is partially my fault. I have been... Uh, out of it, to put it lightly, with all this nonsense, and so I didn't put as much effort, not effort, I, I didn't put as much time and preparation into this long term, into the capstone project, as I probably should have. I, I didn't start find, like looking for a mentor until probably a week or two ago. So, but what I've been doing is I've been emailing people, I've been emailing people because I can't like, go knock on their door or something right now, and I haven't gotten responses like not just denials, like just no response. And so I'm working on that. I'm working with my dad. He's a big musician. He knows a bunch of people. I, I don't want my dad to be my mentor because I struggle with sharing things with my parents. If they watch this, hi dad, not your fault. Uh, so I want it to be someone that I don't like personally know. Well, that I personally know, but that I don't like. Like I don't want my dad. Love my dad, great dad, 10 out of 10. Don't want it to be my dad. So, but he's got contacts, so I'm working through the list, all that jazz, 
Uh, it's a work in progress. I can update all of this as soon as I get it. I just don't want to email someone, have them take a while to respond because, you know, they're also in disarray with this nonsense of a world we live in right now. And then have them respond back and then have to say, hey, sorry, I already found another mentor. Thank you, though, because I don't know how to write that email. And maybe that's something I can work on and just figure out. But I'd like to avoid that if at all possible. So I'm working through it. We'll update that. In summary, don't have an expert yet, but don't stab me for it. It's a work in progress. Okay, last slide, or second to last slide. Brief timeline. Uh, I'm gonna have to read this one because it's a lot. So, coronavirus limitations. Um, here's the thing. I'm stuck at home, and I talked about that collaboration thing and how I work a lot better, or not work a lot better, I work more motivatedly sometimes when I have people to bounce off of and collaborate with and like I'm talking to someone. But I can't really do that as much now. I can't call up my buddy and be like, hey Logan, you wanna jam in the basement? Cause there's no, there's no, that's not happening. Uh, so there's that, but I'm fingers crossed that this all blows over sooner or later. Uh, hope you and your family are healthy and safe by the way. Um, but so there's that limitation. And that also prohibits me from meeting a mentor in person. And you know, well not, completely, but I don't want to like lug a piano to a park or something. Okay. Uh, timeline. First of all, ASAP mentor. We'll be working on that. Let you know when that happens. Um, June 30th is when I want to have a general outline for the 10 songs, or if I decide it doesn't need to be 10 songs, all that. Uh, I want to have general outlines. And then by the end of summer is when I want to have definite outlines. I'm giving myself a lot of room over summer because I don't know what the situation will be over summer. And I wanna make sure that if I can't get things done for some reason or another, I, I have area to adjust around that. So these are all like minimum, minimum goals. I expect to be way above them. But uh, I kinda have some self-esteem problems and I don't wanna like miss something or like not be like, oh yeah, I'm 50% of the way done by the end of quarter one and then be beating myself up for it. Hopefully, it'll, hopefully that'll happen. I think I can make that happen. I just, I'm not confident in myself to do that. Okay, I am talking too much and I am probably not giving myself a better shot. Cheers. So, uh, yeah, end of quarter one, at least a quarter of the pieces. I said a quarter and not 2.5 because one, 2.5 is dumb to say in terms of music. And two, because if that number adjusts, I don't want to be like, oh yeah, but you said you'd have three or two and a half done by now. So there's that. That's the same thing for the rest of them. Q Q2 is at least half of them. Q3 is at least three quarters. And then by three weeks before symposium, I want to be showing this stuff to people, asking for thoughts. Of course, throughout the process, I'll be asking like, hey, what do you think of this tune? And hopefully they'll be like, it's sick. But I mean like, okay, is the bass too loud? Is the bass too quiet? Do I need less loud horn pops? Should there be horn pops? All that jazz. Jazz. Um, and then three weeks before symposium, I want to start doing that because that should all be minor adjustments. Nothing like huge re-recording, any re-recording or rewrites I would like to happen first three quarters. I'm gesturing behind the laptop and you can't see it. Okay. Uh, parental permission. Okay, we're going on a field trip. We're going on a field trip. Come with me. Come with me. Are we good? Are we good? Okay, we're good. We're good. To do, to do. Hey, mom. Yeah. Can I do the capstone? Yeah. Thanks, mom. Hi, dad. Hi. Dab. He did. He didn't dab. Okay. Okay. So yeah, they said yes. I I planned that. I definitely planned that. But we did that all before. Hopefully, I'm still in frame. So that's my parental permission. I don't. They, they signed the form too. Okay, that's all I have. Any questions, email me at kgrusco at mvgshome.org. And thank you for listening to me. Hopefully this hasn't been 20 minutes. Uh, hope you're safe. Hope your family's safe. And listen to Ben Folds if you got some time. That's all I have. All right. Uh, catch you around. Cool. Game over. All right, I'm going to check chat. Let's see what chat's saying.
Oh, y'all have a lot of stuff y'all said. Oh, boy. Okay, quote. It isn't in frame. He's nervous. Dang it. Roll with the pitcher. Mario Kart in the back. Nothing says quarantine pop like Trolls 2. I'm rocking the suburbs. Just like Quiet Riot did. I'm rocking the suburbs. Except that they were talented. Delving. Roasting parents. Don't cry. That doesn't get you a good grade. Actually, Logan, it's been five days. Okay. Jive, you gotta feel it in your heart, dude. Zender's under. He wasn't anything. Oh, hopefully that video lag didn't get caught. Okay. I really have to pee. I drank too much water. Hi, Mom. Can I do the capstone? Oh, that was you guys saying hi to my mom. Thick block. Okay. Okay. Oh, at some point, Glenn Miller ended. Gosh diddly darn. Thank you for coming to the seventh weekly fireside chat. I am your host, Kyle M. Gresco. Good night, gamers, and good night, fellow Americans. I'll see you next week, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't get stabbed by a murder hornet. Oh, I really hope that was good. How long has it been? 40!